Hey friends, in this video, we're going to learn how to fine tune Llama 2, instruct fine tune Llama 2 model using QLoRa and ultimately push the model to Hugging Face Model Hub, just like this. Like you can have a repository in Hugging Face Model Hub and you will have the LoRa adapters there, which you can use later on. So I'm going to give you end to end code, but first to start with, I'm going to just show you a quick demo. So Llama 2 is not a model with a lot of other languages like French. So what we are doing in this particular fine tuning, like peculiarly, I wanted to pick this example quite inspired from this tweet that I have linked at the start and the data set also credit goes to the same author. So what we are trying to do here is fine tune Llama 2 based on some French codes and then use Llama 2 to create those French text. This is a comparison that I just did. In fact, I went to the Llama 2 website and I tried to give that French text to Llama 2 and Llama 2 actually gave me response in English, but we don't want that. We wanted to respond as in French and um, it seems like the fine tuning process actually works fine for us. And uh, that's what I wanted to show you first here. So here is here is a simple text that says, you know, create a particular text in the style of uh, ice and um, fire and it it actually you know we give a text and it generates some kind of french text just go ahead and uh, use google translate and then search this is the entire project i'm going to start with the very 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 first step which is what are we doing here we are trying to use a tutorial that hugging face put together quite a while back which leverages pift and trl to instruct fine tune using q lora so what are we trying to do here is we take a model and we quantize the model, which is like reduce the precision or, um, you know, reduce the data structure, the memory that can hold and use LoRa, which is like a technique that helps you fine tune only a part of a very large model. And we finally save the LoRa adapters, which we can use with the base model. Surprisingly, this entire thing works on free Google Collab. As you can see, like I've managed to use less than 15 gig of memory because this is a quantized model so i wanted to make this tutorial in such a way that this is accessible to everybody so this google collab notebook will be shared in the youtube description so you can directly check it out first install all the required libraries and last time when i put out a similar tutorial people asked me what kind of data goes outside so i'm installing a library called weights and biases this will help us in monitoring the model building process or the training process if you don't want the data to go anywhere, if you don't want the data to leave your Google Collab Notebook, do not install this library, but this is quite helpful in seeing your training loss as parameters and all these in information. So we're going to use four libraries primarily. Accelerate is something that helps us do like uh, device mapping, like parallel computing. Pift is a library that helps us use LoRa and uh, transformers is the hugging face transformers library that helps us load the model and also train the model data set is what we are going to use to download that french data set and trl is what we are going to use to leverage the sft trainer that helps us do instruction fine tuning once we install all the libraries and of course bits and biases helps us do the four bit quantization once we install all the libraries we have to load the data set the data set is available in hugging face model up in this location i've uh, commented this primarily because if you have a data set that has the format something like this it should be like this human and some kind of prompt and then assistant so this is the format that we have this data set and this data set so last time when i put out this tutorial a lot of people asked me how do i build a data set you need to have a data set in this format like it should be like every row should be something like this where it says hash 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 human and then it says what the human asked hash 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 assistant and what the assistant would have replied this is how the data set should be built and the number of rows that you have it's better we we have about i think 500 rows or something less than 1000 rows here and uh, in our case we have both train and test which is quite useful when the model is being learned so we're going to split the model by train and sorry not the model the data set and load the data set in itself once the training 
once the data set that we want to do instruction fine tuning is loaded now we have to load the model in itself i'm using a sharded model so this is something again a lot of people ask me why are we not using a large like one single large model and we are using a sharded model the advantage of using sharded model is when you combine that with accelerate like for example in this case the model has been sharded into multiple pieces like more than like 14 pieces approximately so that helps accelerate to take a particular piece and then move it to different parts of the memory sometimes gpu memory sometimes cpu memory so that helps you load a very large model and also fine tune a large model in a smaller amount of memory that you have caught that's why we are using the sharded model here now you have the bits and bytes as configuration what is the type of data type that you are using quant quantization, quantization type the compute data type and also do you want to load the model in 4 bit this is something that you need to do after that load this model and once you load the model at this point you have loaded the base model which is the llama 2 model the 7 billion parameter model next you are configuring the tokenizer after you have done that now is when you're going to do the LoRa configuration. So it's a very basic configuration. You can play with the configuration. This helps you what is a part of the large language model that you want to ultimately fine tune. Once you set up that, uh, and I would strongly encourage you to go read more about LoRa if you want to play with those parameters. Once you, once you finish that, now is the time when you are going to give certain steps, uh, certain parameters, like where do you want to store the model? How many steps that you want to, after how many steps you want the model to be saved and uh, how many steps you want to be logged and total number of steps that you want it to run and also you know like for example learning rate schedule do you want it to be constant do you want it to change and all this information i i wouldn't necessarily play with this until i very well clearly understand what is happening and the next thing is where we are going to pass everything trainer which is from the transformers library to the sft transformer sf tra sft trainer sft stands for supervised fine tuning which is also known as instruction fine tuning and we have specified what is a field in the data set and we have given the training data set in itself and the pift configuration and all the information that we have i read it from hugging face blog post that before we do the modeling uh, sorry training process it's good to upscale the layer norms to float 32 for more stable training and i do not know entirely how it helps but I have done the same thing as I mentioned, as they mentioned. The next thing is we are going to start trainer.train. Once we start this process, like for example, I can start the process trainer.train. Once you start this process, it's going to give you an estimated amount of time, how much time it's going to take. And it is also going to show you the training loss that is available. Like after every 10 step, because that's what we are logging. After every 10 step, it is going to give you the step number and the loss and typically what you expect in any machine learning process is the training loss to come down so the 10th the step that you have like let's say 0.99 as the training loss and now in the 20th step you would expect it to come down in the 30th step you would expect it to come down in the 40th step you would expect it to come down in the 50th step you would again expect it to come down and this is how you would ideally get like a model training loss something like this 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 and machine learning is called convergence uh, that means you know your model is trying to learn the best as it can from the given data so this is something that you need to look for if it is not happening like this um then you know something something is not going good i'm going to stop this here because you know i've already done this part after while you do this you can go to weights and biases and also monitor your training how does it go and all this kind of information once you have done that, the next step is that you can save the model in itself. You can go ahead and create a folder called outputs and save the model. And this code is helping you do that. And it saves two files, a .json and a .bin file. One has the configuration, second has the LoRa model in itself. The next thing is if you want to use this model, how do you use it? This is a question a lot of people had asked me when I covered last time LoRa. Uh, so the way it is simple so first you load the lower configuration from whatever folder where you have saved it and then you get the pift model where you have got the model in itself and also the lower configuration using get underscore pift model and then you basically do the same thing like you treat the model similar like how you treat any other transformers model 
I just wanted to see what is in the data set and use the same thing for the prompt. And uh, once you have the prompt, like the text, you send it to tokenizer, send it to GPU device. Here is GPU, the CUDA zero, and then use the model to generate the output and use the ge generated output and uh, decode it. And then finally print the output to the user. And until this point, everything works fine for the first time. But for example, sometimes you want to do something again and again, you want to use the same model again and again and you cannot rely on collab to do that and in that particular case that's where you have to use this particular code to authenticate your notebook to be used with hugging face model hub and when you log in it is going to ask you to enter the token the token that you have got you have to go to your hugging face account and go to access token like click the profile go to access token copy the token and come back here and then you paste it once you paste it and then select login, your notebook is authenticated with hugging face profile and you get to push the model to a particular folder and the model gets available for you to use or for everybody to use in the world. So this takes us to the end of this tutorial where we started with understanding how to fine tune Llama 2 Q LoRa model and we ultimately ended up pushing the model, the fine tuned model to hugging face model. If you still have question about let's say you push this model how do you use it in the next time all you have to do is you have to load the required libraries like load peft load transformers load bits and bytes load accelerate and everything then you have to do this thing so lora config from lora config from tree chain instead of outputs you would put it you would give the the model that you saved that particular link from the model hub and in get model and mod model and lora config so the model is also something that you need to load from there and ultimately you have everything that you want and you can run the the llama 2 that is fine tuned with the data set that you have given just a disclaimer i didn't get a lot of time to test this model particularly because it is in french i was struggling to use google translate and then try to understand what is it giving me like the the text that it gave us like i'm surprised if i burn if i shiver if i tremble Again, I trained for a very less amount of time, so I wouldn't necessarily expect you to it to give me great output. But the point here is that you can use free Google Collab Notebook and train like a small amount of time, small amount of data. But if you have large amount of data, large like you, then you need to train it for a large amount of time. Something I would like you to try it out and let me know in the comment section how does it go. But having said that, as usual, this Google Collab Notebook will be linked in the YouTube description completely for free. You get to start with that. Once you come to the Google Collab Notebook, all you have to do is run everything and it should technically work fine without any issue. Let me know in the comment section if you have any issues. See you in another video. Happy prompting.